lights up on what appears to be abandoned train tracks somewhere in a train yard. As some music begins to play, almost ominously, two figures bathed in shadow come trudging on, both carrying shovels slung over their shoulders. Soon, they begin to mime digging in an almost resigned, hypnotic cadence with one another as the music continues. The music finally fades out as the figures are soon revealed to be one youngish looking boy and one older looking man. The boy looks tired and seems distracted, while the man seems to be doing fine and is focused. Can we take a break? Shh! Come on, I'm tired. Just five minutes to rest. Will you shut up? The more you keep complaining, the longer we're going to be here. Terry. I know Pop is mighty sick right now, and you can't work like you used to, but this is difficult for me. I'm not as strong as you. Look here, David. We both promised Pop we'd work at the rail station, shoveling the coal out of here. We're not doing this for our health. It's to make money for our family. You, me, Mom, Pop, and the babies. I know, I know. I want to make money for us. I don't want to be poor, but I'm 13 years old. I feel like I'm too young for this. I should be going to school or be with my friends. Hey, I'll have you know Pop started working in the mines and in these stations when he was nine. I was only slightly older than you when I started working too. I guess what I'm trying to say is quit your belly aching. Besides, It'll make you stronger to start working when you're young. Your muscles and your mind. I guess so. The two go back to work in silence for a few moments. But soon, David, almost in disgust, stops shoveling and looks back to his brother. I just wish there could be another way! Uh, not this again. I wish there was a way we could get some money without having to do this. Enough money where I could go back to school and you could do a job you actually want to do. Look here, Runt. I'm your older brother, and I say you need to just quit with those dumb thoughts and get back to work. I don't want to have to be here all day and all night. Got it? But I just... Got it? I got it. I got it. David and Terry both go back to shuttle. Soon, though, we hear the sounds of a train approaching as well as a train whistle going off. David, curious, looks up from his work. Hey, Terry? I'm not gonna tell you again to get back to work. No, no, shh, listen, you hear that? Hear what? That train whistle, and something running down the tracks. I, I thought the line here was closed months ago. Huh. You're right, I hear it too. The slide was closed, but... But... Nah. There's no way a train would be running here. Then how do you explain that noise? Well, shoot, I don't know. I'm not the one in charge of this station. It's not like a conductor is going to come over here and say hello now, is it? Soon the train eerily comes to a stop. Ominously, a spotlight shines on a third figure coming onto the stage. He is dressed all in black and has a sinister look about him. David's eyes widen in fear, and he pokes Terry in the side to get his attention. 
Terry, who's that? Huh? Can... Can I help you, mister? On the contrary, gentlemen. I think I can help you. Who are you? Oh, I'm just a friend. A friend looking at two young men who seem to be down on their luck. A friend who wants to help you poor, pathetic lie. We didn't ask for your life story, buddy. We just wanted your name. Mr. Black. Mr. Black? Indeed. Is that because you're all dressed in black? <laughs> sharp boy. Very sharp. But no, it's just a coincidence. Now then, David, Terry, if I may have a word. How did you know our names? Just a lucky guess is all. Now then, gentlemen. Put down your shovels a minute and listen. We ain't got time for that, Mr. Black, was it? We have work to do. Yes, but if I recall, you were musing about how you didn't want to do this kind of work. You want to go to school and be educated. A fine goal to have. How do you know that? Oh, I know a lot of things. Oh, yeah? Can you guess what number I'm thinking of? Shh! Look here. If you ask me, this is some kind of prank you're pulling on us. You must have been spying from afar and listening to our conversations. Well, my brother and I don't appreciate eavesdroppers, so go back from where you came from and leave us alone. Ah, uh, but I can't quite do that. At least not yet. I have to speak to you first. <sighs> well, whatever you need to say, just spit it out, then leave. Boys, boys, boys. Listen to me. Mr. Black approaches David and Terry, oozing politeness, but also with a sinister menace to him. What would you say if I told you that not only can I help you get out of this crummy job, but I can promise you that you'll never have to work another day in your lives again. What do you mean? I mean, you can go to school, David. And you, Terry. Well, you'll never have to work in this place again. Neither will your father when he gets well. Hey, hey, this isn't funny at all. How did you know about our father? Boys, I have a deal I'd like to make with the two of you. It's quite simple, really. I can arrange for a nice stroke of luck for your family. You see, in the next few days, you lucky lot are going to come into a very, very substantial amount of money. An oil strike, to be exact oil? Indeed. You'll have dozens of offers pouring in to buy the land where you find the oil. And by the time it's all said and done, you will become millionaires. Millionaires. You'll have enough money that you won't need to work another day in your lives. <laughs> what are you, some kind of scammer? Snake oil salesman? A fake psychic of some kind? Oh, no, 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 no. I am in earnest, Terry. I know very well when things are going to happen. Bless you, by the way. Bless me? Well, considering you're going to sneeze right about... Achoo! Now. Terry, I don't like that man. He's scaring me. Look, Mr. Black. I'm fixing to knock your block off in about two seconds. Harry, listen. Let's not succumb to violence. I'm simply offering you the deal of a lifetime. You'll become richer beyond your wildest dreams. There's a catch to this. There's always a catch to this. 
No catch, friend. Don't play dumb. No one offers something like this without wanting something in return. Come on now, don't be so suspicious. I tell you I want nothing in return. Well, okay, fine, you've caught me. I do need one little thing. Mr. Black slowly produces two slips of paper and a pen from behind him, almost by magic. He holds them out to the two. David takes his hesitantly, while Terry takes his suspiciously. Sign these papers, and the deal will be done. 48 hours from now, you'll strike your royal and be on easy street for good. So we just sign these here papers? That's it. Nothing else. Nothing else. Raising a curious brow, David begins to look at his slip of paper as Mr. Black tries to stop him. No need to read them, boys. It's just a formality is all. Well, gee, are you sure? There's an awful lot of writing on this paper. I'm sure. The signer of this paper pledges to give... Come on now, there's no need to bore yourself with that. Hang on, I just want to read a little bit. It's just a formality, really. The signer of this paper pledges to give up to the proprietor, Mr. Lewis C. Black. Lewis C. Black? <sighs> yes, that's my first name. Now can we have some signage, please? Lewis C. Black. Their soul. For all eternity. Well, I guess the cat is out of the bag. Our... Our souls? Your souls. Lewis C. Lewis C. Lucy. Lucifer. Oh, oh Lord, have mercy! David drops his paper and backs away from Mr. Black, pointing a shaky, scared finger at him as he does. Don't you come no further! Don't cause a scene, David. Get away from me! Get away from us! You're the devil! The devil in the flesh! Lower your voice. No, I won't! I'm not signing that paper! I don't care if I stay poor forever! I'm not giving my soul to you! I don't want to be soulless. I want to live. <laughs> oh, and here I thought you would be the one to succumb. You did complain about your lot in life after all. I must confess, I'm impressed. Mr. Black grabs David's fallen paper from the ground, then slowly eyes Terry. I suppose that means you refuse to? If so, just hand me back the paper and I'll be on my way. Hand me the pen. No. Terry, no! Stay out of this, David! Don't do it, Terry! I believe he said stay out of it, boy. Mr. Black smirks and hands Terry the pen. Terry begins to sign his paper as David can only watch in horror. You're doing the right thing, Terry. This is going to put your family at ease forever. No, do not. Terry, please. I'm your brother. Listen to me. You can't do this. David! You were right. You ought to be in school. And Pop ought to be retired comfortably in peace. And, and if this doesn't... Then so be it. Terry finishes the signing and hands the paper back to Mr. Black, who chuckles and slips it into his pocket. Very good. Very good. A promise is a promise. In 48 hours, the oil will be found, 
and the money will be your families to have. Now then, come along, Terry. We have places to go. The train is about to leave the station. Terry nods and, almost in a trance-like state, he starts to walk off with Mr. Black as David, tearfully, rushes up to them. Terry, no! Run along now, David. This doesn't concern you. Please, let my brother go! Sorry, kid. He signed his paper. He belongs to me now. But hey, on the bright side, in two days, you can start school. You can use some of the money you get to buy some decent textbooks. I don't want textbooks if it means losing my brother. Stop! 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 David sinks to his knees in despair, and he can only watch helplessly as Terry and Mr. Black go off and the same sinister music from before begins to play.